Okay, and the last one is I move out and then I thrust in. She moves out, she thrusts in. I move out, I thrust in. Hey guys, thank you for checking out our video. My name's Sean Elders. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to navigate double knife. Let's get started. Double knife, how do we navigate it? Okay, so the previous video I started to show you how to slash and use those positions and how to navigate two weapons, learning different types of patterns, okay? The basis of the basic patterns, okay? So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to show you different types of engagements on how to use two weapons to navigate. There are obviously, there's three main ranges, okay? When I'm in my position, this is what we call Largo Mono range. I can't reach the body right now. When we're talking about distance, we had Largo Mono range, we have Mithro Mono range. Mithro means that I can reach the body. I can, I'm, I'm able, I'm also, when she puts the knife up, I can check the hand, I can check the, the position. Now we have what they call Corto Mono range. So for instance, she gives me a thrust in my neck and I come in and I'm, I'm in this position here. So we're gonna work mainly in the Mithro Mono range. Um, so when we're doing that, what that's gonna look like is she is going to give me a number one, okay? And the first one I'm gonna have you do uh, is we can practice structure, okay? The, the key element to this is when we talk about beginner level, we talk about intermediate level, when we talk about advanced level, those are dictated based on skill, okay? That's why they're called beginner, intermediate, advanced. How does that how is that dictated? That's dictated on the, your ability to be able to engage the attacks, be able to identify the attacks, and be able to use your skills of footwork, line formalization, and of course there's identifying openings, identifying attacks. Then you have timing, footwork, and understanding range and all those things like that, along in and those are all combined together. Okay. There's more, but those are the main elements that you have to understand when we're talking about beginner, intermediate, advanced. And so when we're talking about knife engagement, obviously the first aspect of knife engagement is four rules, okay? There's four rules you start with. Somebody pulls a knife, you run, okay? Number two, if you can't run, find an equalizer. Number three, defang the snake. Number four, follow up till they're no longer a threat. Those are always the rule, but when we're talking about curriculum we're talking about developing higher levels of skill obviously the the highest the higher level of skill is you're always going to work within the idea of after you develop some skill you have to pressure test it you have to always go under the the under the microscope and be tested and put into accountability how well you're able to deal with it when you're going up into the between 60 to a to 95% engagement. So battle games, pressure testing, okay? Sparring, all those things help develop the actual real skill, but you have to start somewhere. And a lot of times, you know, you'll get people commenting and going, oh, you know, this isn't gonna work. That's gonna, not gonna work. It's not gonna work if you don't develop the skill first. So that's a very important part of this whole thing. So we have to be realistic with our, uh, with training always, okay? and and. The idea is that you're developing certain level, certain techniques and skills, and what's happening is, is you have to go through a progression to the point where then eventually you develop the ability to adapt inside of an attack, and you, and you go into battle games and battle, pre, uh, battle testing with high levels, uh, starting off low levels of pressure and build up to high levels of pressure. So the doubters, the, 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 the haters that are always trying to say things, you need to know that there's always a progression to everything. It, you can always use the basics. You can always, the idea is you always get out of there if there's a real knife. But we're talking about developing real knife skills and higher levels of skill. And how do you do that? You have to start at the basis and work your way up. Most people don't take the time to do it. You have to do 10,000 repetitions to be able to make it part of your, your game, okay? And you have to be able to develop the ability with that 10,000 repetitions to make it all the way up to the point where you're going 85, 95, you know, almost 100% without hurting, you know, getting seriously injured, okay? And you have to use the proper gear and head, you know, all that stuff like that, okay? Fencing masks and all that stuff. Um, and that's a very important part of this whole thing. 
But when we talk about this, we're talking about developing the skill, okay? And so double knife, how do I navigate with two knives? What do I do to make sense of this? And so one of the exor basic exercises we can do is when she puts the knife out to go to a number one, this is the aim. This is the target right here, right to the neck, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna bring my knife up and do start off as a beginner, you do what we call bone stop and I cut the arm. And I'm just gonna pass it, okay? And, and, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check it here, turn it one, two, pass it like this. It's kind of like Huba, but we're at a little bit of distance. If I did it, that would be here. So she comes in with this hand, mm -hmm. she passes it. She's gonna cut and then hook it, yep, and then check. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And so this is a basic Kuba with the double knife. Yep. It's all right. Now, one of the things that I'm doing is when she hooks me, I'm gonna naturally kind of bring the knife close. When I go here and I hook it, I'm gonna bite down on the arm and pass it just past center line, and then I bring the knife in and I check at that, and then we go back and forth. Okay, it's a great exercise. Just like that. Yeah. So one, cut, hook, bring it past center line, re-engage, okay? And then we go here, just like that. And there are many different things. You might be going, oh, you could do it like this and do this. And there's a lot of different things, okay? And there's attacks that can take place inside of this, but you're learning the basics of this, okay? So this is the first one. This is out of Hubud. Okay. The second one is she takes one little step back. Okay. And this time, uh, instead of doing that, she's going to give me that number one. I bone stop it, but I hook it like this. And notice where I go. I go right to the leg, just like that. I, I, I'm going to cut and press, and then she's going to do the same thing. So what's going to happen is she's going to check it with this hand. Okay. And then she's going to hook it and then stick that right in my leg. And she's gonna cut and press, cut and press, yep. And then do the same thing. So I'm gonna come in, this is when me throw rage, I'm, I'm shoving that in, cut and press. She's gonna do the same thing, cut and press. One, two, cut, stab to the leg, cut and press. Boom, right to my leg, boom. So this is what we call, this is the inside position and this is out of me throw mono range. One, Two, I thrust it in. I'm always monitoring that other arm. Good. Cut. I can cut up sometimes here and do it. Yeah. Yep. So when she goes here, she can also cut up. So when she checks, she checks bone stops. She cuts up and she hooks. Thrust it in. Okay. There are many variations to this. You have to remember that there's sometimes when this hand won't be engaged. Okay, this hand will be too far away. And when she does that number one, you'll get your head out of the way and you'll come out, out notice how I moved back a little bit. You know, I'm coming like this because she's going for my neck. We got to remember that. We got to make sure that we keep ourselves accountable when we're doing these exercises. Because if, <clears throat> if you're not, when, you, when I do that number one, I've got to make sure that I'm going at the neck. I've got to make sure I'm going at the neck. If I'm doing it too far away or whatever, they're gonna get used to somebody not really attacking them, not really giving them at the right angle. Because later on, when you start to spar and you start doing more stuff, it's gonna, you're, it's, you're doing a disadvantage to your partner and you're doing a disadvantage to yourself because you're not practicing appropriate targeting systems and practicing appropriate ways to identify the attacks and deal with the attacks, okay? And identifying the openings. So that is a very important part of this whole thing is that you have to keep your Par uh, partner accountable and they have to keep you accountable okay and make sure that you guys are feeding each other because you are doing yourselves a disservice if you're not getting into range so when i do that number one i'm coming in and making sure that she's doing it at the right range okay and i thrust it notice how i go low like this and i i go here and then she goes does the same thing boom and i can cut go with du two double knives if i want i can cut it and stab as well yeah So notice how I always go low. I wanna go low. I wanna take advantage of the idea of having that press, having that lower position, having my feet a little bit farther apart. 
if you're not doing the proper body mechanics, you're not going to do them pro appropriate when it's needed in, in live motion. Okay. So the last, the next one is you're going to be here. And when she does that number one, you're just going to move out like this. And then you're going to come back in and you're going to stab at the neck. Okay. So she goes in, she moves out, cuts, and then she thrusts. Okay. And, and all you're going to do is you're going to, when she thrusts, just make sure you're not thrusting at their eyes. You want to stay safe. So when she gives that number one, I, I move out and then I thrust. And what I do is I thrust past her off to the side a little bit of her head. Okay. So I'm moving back out of the way, trying to evade it. And then, and I will do a little bit of Paquita Tertia here with my movement, just like this. Okay. And this is a good practice to do here because this is our jab distance. And this gives us more distance to make with reverse grip. So I give it to her. Woo, she moves out of the way, thrusts it past my head. Then she moves, she moves back into position, comes in with mine. One and two. One and two. One and two. One, yep. One and two. One and two. So that is a great exercise that you have that you can work on in Largo Mono range. Okay, so I gave you three basic ranges. Okay. First one, hubud. One, two, slice and pass it just like that. I don't know where we were. So who bud? Just like that. Okay. Then the second one is we take a little teeny step. This time I'm gonna still bone stop, but I'm gonna hook it and go to the leg step and go and do the same thing. She's gonna do the inside. So you remember cut up, thrust to the leg, press cut. She does the same thing. Then hook it. Yep, there we go. See that? And I'm going the inside this time. Pressing step here and pass it. Just like that. Boom. Okay, and the last one is I move out and then I thrust in. She moves out, she thrusts in. I move out, I thrust in. She moves out. I thrust in, cutting the arm and then coming back in, cutting the arm, coming back in. So we're just doing that motion over and over again. Practice these. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Panatukin level one. This program is one of the most streamlined. It's over eight and a half hours long. It gives you everything step-by-step, step, everything that you need fundamentals breakdown of all the exercises you need, understanding of empty hand, how to use fight without gloves, with gloves. It's gonna teach you all the aspects that you need about the foundation and fundamentals of Panatukin. okay? Unlike what we see a lot of times now in the combatives in the Filipino martial arts world, a lot of techniques, a lot of drills, but how do you make those drills go from the drill to actual real combatives. And that's what this program, this is the first level to that and getting you set up, learning all the aspects of how do I engage? What's the techniques? What do I need to practice to get myself where I'm able to be able to be adaptable in combat? Okay, that's the most important thing. That's what everybody's looking for. How do I get better? How do I get, how am I able to adapt when somebody attacks me. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? What I'm going to do is I'm giving you a different perspective on Panatukin, unlike what you see in this modern day where you see a lot of drills and exercises that just don't translate to real combat. I call the meat and potatoes of combat. Not the fluff, not all the extra stuff, but only simply the things that you really need that are going to help you be effective in combat. But the most important thing in combat is to survive. The most important thing is to be able to adapt, okay? And so that's what this program is all about. This is gonna help you go to that next level. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or you've been doing this for 10 years, I'm gonna help fill in those gaps, fill in those holes that you've never learned before. go to our website, pinnaclecombatarts.com. There you can find out more about what I do and the classes that I provide. Thank you guys so much for your support and have a great day.